Good morning, everyone. Our readings for today are Psalm 50, <clears throat> Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 through 21, and John's first letter, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We've come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, and to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. So let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips, that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. <clears throat> Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we've left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life <clears throat> to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we read Psalm 50. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire. Around him, a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge, Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your foals. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. <clears throat> I know all the birds of the hills and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline, you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you're pleased with him. 
and you keep company with adulterers. You give your mouth free rein for evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was one like yourself. But now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Mark this, then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. The one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. And the first, first, the Old Testament reading from the book of Daniel, chapter 1, starting at verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. <clears throat> and the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the vessels of the house of God. And he brought them to the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and placed his vessels in the treasury of his God. Then the king commanded Aspenaz, the chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish and of good appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace, and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food of the, uh, that the king ate and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years and at the end of that time they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Daniel he called Belteshazzar, Hananiah he called Shad Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or drink the wine that he drank. Therefore he asked the chief of eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. And God gave Daniel favour and compassion in the sight of the chief of eunuchs. And the chief of eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear, my lord the king, who assigned your food and your drink, for why should he see that you are in worse condition than the youths of your own age? So, you would endanger my head with the king. And Daniel said to the steward, whom the king of the eunuchs had assigned over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youths who eat the king's food be observed by you and deal with your servants according to what you see. So he listened to them in this matter and tested them for ten days. <clears throat> At the end of ten days it was seen that they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. So the steward took away the food and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. As for these four youths, God gave them learning and skill in all the literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. At the end of the time when the king had commanded that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king spoke with them, and among all of them none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the king. And in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in his kingdom. Daniel was there until the first year of King Cyrus. Hear the word of the Lord. And we say the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. 
He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the land of all who hate us. Thus, he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors as he remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness <clears throat> and righteousness before him in all his days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from 1 John chapter 1, starting at verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Hear the word of the Lord. We read Canticle number 12. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ the Lord will come again. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ the Lord will come again. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. God looked after the four Jewish captives that King Nebuchadnezzar had selected for special training from the body of captives. But he gave Daniel a very special gift of wisdom and Daniel was able to use this to good effect for the rest of his life and the life of the church since his time. On more than one occasion, he was able to answer the king's questions when nobody else could. And John tells us to walk in the light. Just what does that mean? What is the light that we are to walk in? It's the guidance that God offers us. In Isaiah 30, 
We're told that if we follow God and are obedient to him, he will guide us. We are told that your ears shall hear the word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. But we need to realize that there is no one size fits all. We are each created unique and God has given each of us specific gifts and abilities. We read in 1 Corinthians 12 that God has given specific gifts to us as individuals. None of us have them all. He wants us to work together as the body of Christ. And he teaches that there is no divisions in the body of Christ when he says in verse 25 that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together. He doesn't appoint us as lone rangers. We are all part of the same team. We all look to the same Lord and Saviour, so we are all led to faithfulness and obedience to the same high aim. And this, of course, <clears throat> has applied throughout the Christian era. We do well to follow the example of C.S. Lewis. Lewis was a solitary man, but on his conversion to following God, he realised that he needed to be part of the body of Christ. His obedience to the teaching demanded it. So from then on, he tried not to miss any of the teaching or services that were available to him through his fellowship. God's leadership is particular in how this should be tackled. He needs absolute obedience. And it's important not to add our own message to God's message. I recently read in a book on revival that explained how God had shut down a revival when someone embroidered the gospel message. God knows what he's doing. He just needs people to roll out the plan. And if we are to be part of this, we need to be in a position to listen to what he's asking. We can confidently trust ourselves to follow God, even when, as we are taught in Isaiah 30 again, that through though the Lord will give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself any more. But your eyes shall see your teacher, and your ear shall hear the word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. We take the final verses of today's psalm to heart when we are taught, The one who offers thanksgiving as his service glorifies me. To one who offers his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. We say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in, the, in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
pray her recalling Christ's saving work. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood and obedience to your baptism, fasting and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry and word and work, by your mighty acts of power, by your proclamation of the, of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and sweat of blood, by your cross and the passion, by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. In all times of trial and sorrow, in all times of joy and prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. Hear our prayers, O Lord our God. Hear us, good Lord. And now we pray for all people according to their needs. Teach us to use the resources of the earth to your glory, that we may share in your goodness and praise. Praise you for your loving kindness. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten with your spirit all who teach and all who learn. Hear us, good Lord. Help and comfort the lonely and the aged, the bereaved, the overworked, the exploited and the oppressed. Hear us, good Lord. Support and encourage all who are in poverty, unemployment or distress. Protect those whose work is dangerous and keep in safety all who travel. Hear us, good Lord. Keep fathers, mothers and children united in their family life and give them wisdom and strength in times of stress. Hear us, good Lord. Heal the sick in mind and body. Strengthen and preserve all women in childbirth and all young children. Hear us, good Lord. Heal the sick in mind and body. Strengthen and preserve all women in childbirth and young children. Hear us, good Lord. Defend and provide for the widowed and the orphaned, all migrant workers and refugees, the homeless and the victims of strife. Have pity on prisoners and all who live in here, fear. Hear us, good Lord. Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Hear us, good Lord. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. So may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. And the Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace.